Kevin Hines jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge and survived. Experts say suicide is a growing concern during the pandemic. There's no better person to talk to than Kevin because he tried it. We'll tell you exactly what he did. He joins us in a moment with his important story. What were you thinking right before you jumped? I sat on that bus in the back row, middle seat. I'm crying my eyes out like a baby. There was a guy to my left, said to the fellow next to him, what the hell's wrong with that kid with a smile on his face? As soon as you let go of the railing, instant regret. What should people do? The vast majority of survivors say the same thing. What have I just done? I don't want to die. God, please save me. Jumping off a bridge that high is like slamming into concrete. A vacuum sucks you under 70 feet. What happened when you hit the water? What intervened? It was the single worst action I had ever taken. More teens die by suicide than heart disease, AIDS, pneumonia, the flu, cancer, and lung disease combined. And that is a travesty. I thought I had to die. And I was wrong. To anybody out there watching this right now, what do you want them to know? I got on the next bus. I sat in the very last seat in the middle row. We began to drive out to the Golden Gate Bridge. And that's when it hit me. I realized I didn't want to die at all. I said, well, what are you doing, Kevin? Get off the bus. And so I'm sitting there and I'm crying my eyes out, hoping for one individual on this bus crowded with people to look at me and say, hey, kid, are you OK? Hey, kid, there's something wrong. Can I help you? I, I was walking up to the bus driver, hoping that he would see my pain. But I could not say it overtly. I could not tell him that I was in trouble. I could not make those sounds. And he looked at me. Come on, kid, get off the bus. I got to go. There was a guy to my left, said to the fellow next to him while pointing at me with his thumb, what the hell's wrong with that kid with a smile on his face? I thought, that's it. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. A wave of emotion overcame me as I stepped down off of this bus. My feet heavy, my heart palpitating, waterfalls flowing out of my eyes. I walked forward. As I stood atop the Golden Gate Bridge walkway, staring and leaning over the four foot nothing rail, peering down to the looming waters below. I walked back toward the traffic. I ran as fast as I could and I threw myself over the rail. The millisecond that my hands left that rail, instant regret for my actions. I fell 220 feet, 25 stories at 75 miles an hour in four seconds. I prayed on the way. What have I just done? I don't want to die. God, please save me. My father, on the morning of, he pleaded with me to be with him that day. He pleaded with me to just hang out, because he could see something was wrong. And at six in the morning, I entered my dad's room, and he looked at me and he goes, Kevin, what's wrong? And I desperately wanted to tell him the truth. And eventually I convinced my dad that morning that I was fine, knowing full well that I was going to the Golden Gate and I was gonna die. He turned to me and he said one of his favorite things. Kevin, I love you, be careful. When you hit a vacuum, sucks you under 70 feet. My legs were completely immobile. I had shattered my lower vertebrae into shards like glass. I swam 70 feet with one breath and without the use of my legs. It was the fastest I ever swam because I knew I wanted to live. I break the surface, I'm up and down in the water. I can't stay afloat. I keep going down. My boots are waterlogged. I cannot stay afloat. I'm going to drown. Praying the entire way, God, please save me. I don't want to die. I made a mistake. I broke the surface. God, please save me. I don't want to die. I made a mistake. Bobbed up and down in the water. God, please save me. I don't want to die. I made a mistake. I can't die here. If I die here, no one will ever know I didn't want to. No one will ever know I knew I made a mistake. And that is when something began to circle beneath me. It was large and very slimy and very alive. And I just I'm gonna die by a shark bite. It just kept circling faster and faster beneath me. No longer was I waiting in the water. I'm lying on top of it being kept buoyant by this thing. 
was, it was bumping me up. I was no longer swimming. I'm lying on my back, being kept afloat by this thing, thinking, when is it going to bite me? There was no shark, but there was a sea lion. And the people above looking down believed it to be keeping me afloat until the Coast Guard boat arrived behind me. He got the phone call from the hospital. And he calls his secretary, Rachel, and, and, and says, uh, Rachel, uh, my son has just jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge. I need you to ride in the passenger seat of the car because if you don't, I will drive off of a cliff. He wouldn't be able to see straight to get to the hospital. And he walks in to my room. And I'm laying there all, you know, kind of broken and bent. IVs in both arms. I had a tube coming out of my chest and just waterfalls flow from it. I looked up at my dad. I said, Dad, I'm sorry. And he said, no, Kevin, I'm sorry. And he comes over and he puts his hand on my forehead and he says, Kevin, you are going to be okay, I promise. And I never held words closer to my chest ever before. I just, I just held him. Okay, Dad says I'm gonna be okay. I got this. The road to recovery was pretty long. I, I still have all the symptoms I ever had. I just know how to cope with it and I know how to beat it. I built a support network over these years so that I wouldn't be fighting this alone. My dad took me back to the bridge a year later to the date of my anniversary. And we, we stood at the very light rail that I attempted. I know exactly which light rail it is. On the drive there, he pulls over right in front of the police officer's union building. And he goes, Kevin, Kevin, pick a flower. I go, Dad, I'm not picking a flower from the police officer's union building until you get arrested. He goes, pick a flower, Kevin. Jump out, grab a purple tulip with yellow inside. We go to the bridge. We get to the parking lot. I don't want to get out of the car. I don't want to get out of the car. Dad, I can't do this. I can't do this. Kevin, we need this. You have to do this. We need closure. So we, we walk out to the bridge and he says, show me where. And I showed him the exact light rail like it happened the day before. We hold the flower over the rail. My father grabs my left hand with his right. We say in our father. And he says, drop the flower. And I dropped the flower and it wafted down and hit the water and made the tiniest ripple effects. And two feet to the right popped up a sea lion. And it was arguably the most beautiful moment I've ever had with my dad besides him being the best man at my wedding. Now I know that no matter what I'm faced with, I will defeat it. I have chronic thoughts of suicide. They plague me. They'll never, ever take me. There's no way I'm going to take my life. I'm always going to ask for help. If I was able to exit this body and just, just be someone there for, for me, my, my 19 year old self on that bridge, I would have stopped. I would put my hand on my shoulder, gently nudge it this way, and said, This isn't the answer. Your life matters, your pain matters, and this isn't the end. This is just the beginning. Anybody out there watching this right now, considering it, what do you want them to know? Stop. Breathe. Just take a moment. Four in through the nose, eight through the mouth, pursed lips like a whistle but no sound. Stop. Breathe. Stop. Breathe. If you give the world time to have things change, you might get to have that beautiful future that you never even desired or imagined. I travel around the world trying to help people who don't have it all, who don't have that support network, I mean, find reasons to support themselves. And if one of you is suffering and you're quiet about it, today, tomorrow, the next, ask for help. Practice never again silencing your pain. Tell the truth about it to someone. You're not alone. And suicide is never the solution to your problems. It is the problem. And you can defeat this pain one day at a time.